Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the taxability of alimony and child support. The tax treatment of alimony depends on the date on which the divorce agreement was executed. What does that mean? Well, we have a cutoff date. Any, div any divorce agreement executed on or before December 31st, 2018, any payment made will be deductible by the payor. So if you're paying, you'll be able to deduct the payment and the recipient of the alimony, the amount is taxable to them. Now, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 20, 2017 introduced some changes to the tax treatment of alimony. And basically, it simplified it. Any, any divorce agreement executed after December 31st, 2018, simply put, starting 2019, are neither deductible by the payor, so if you pay, it's not deductible, nor taxable by the recipient. So it's very important to look at the date and determine whether the agreement was executed before December 31st, 2018, on or before. If that's the case, well, guess what? The payor can deduct it and the recipient is taxable for the recipient. After that date, it becomes a mute, it doesn't matter. The person that's paying cannot deduct. The person that's receiving, it's not taxable to them. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles, my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Assuming you have a divorce agreement before and you received alimony, alimony received is reported on Schedule 1 with other income, then you add up all of, all of your income, and let's assume that you, you, you included, you know, $10,000 of alimony and your other income totaled to $15,000. That $15,000 is, is transferred to line 8. Now, this is line uh, form 1040. This is what it looks like. For the, pay, for the person that's paying, they can deduct. So, notice here on page 2, page 2 of Schedule 1, of Schedule 1, there's adjustment to income. The person that's paying will be able to report the 10,000. So remember, the person cannot be paying and receiving, but this is assuming the payor and the payee, two different individuals, and they have to report their social security. Again, that's assuming the agreement was executed before December 31st, 2018. Now, what is considered alimony? So it's very important to know the definition. A payment may qualify as alimony provided that it's made in cash, it has to be cash, it cannot be property or anything else, pursuant to a divor divorce agreement or other separation instrument. The agreement does not explicitly specify that it's not alimony. So if it, it explicitly specifies that's not alimony, then it's not alimony. The payor and the recipient are not member of the same household, because if you're living together, there's no separation here. Also, the payment is made to a spouse with whom the taxpayer cannot be filing a joint return. So you cannot be filing a joint, re joint return and one person is the payee and the other person is the payor. And the payor, the person that's paying, does not have any liability once the other individual, the recipient, passes away. Well, those, this is the definition of alimony. And they may ask you, you know, which of the following will not qualify as the part of the definition. Now, in case of divorce, sometimes you might have property settlement. Basically, the hus husband and the spouse, they they liquidate and they might uh, split things up, the home, uh, stocks, bonds, so on and so forth. The property settlement represent the transfer of property to a former spouse following a div divorce agreement between the two spouses. The transferor should not recognize any gain or loss on the transfer of the property. In addition, the transferor's basis is carried over to the transferee. So basically, the basis of the transferor is carried basis to the transferee. Now, before 2019, before the, before the change to the tax law, whenever the IRS believed one spouse was making alimony payment through property settlement, remember, proper, property settlement 
is not a taxable event and this is what people used to do they used to basically what what they called front loading of alimony payment give you more in property settlement because it's not taxable then the alimony was recaptured into the gross income of the recipient and allowed a deduction from the payor's gross income that's no longer the case after 2019 and now anything uh, you know after 2022 that's no longer an issue because alimony payment are no longer taxable or deductible so that's alimony how about how about child support agreement because in a divorce you have alimony payment and you have child support payment easy child support payment let's just define them first are payments made to satisfy the legal obligation to support the taxpayer's child regardless of the execution date it does not matter and that's always been the case of the divorce agreement child support payment are neither taxable nor deductible so basically it's you know if you see child support you ignore it's not deductible for the person that's paying and the person that's receiving that's not that's not taxable to them it does not matter when the agreement was executed divorce agreement does not explicitly state the amount to be paid for a child support any payment would be suspended or stopped after the occurrence of a future event such as the child reaching the age of majority or the marriage of the child that it will be treated as a child support on the other hand when the divorce agreement determines separate payment for alimony and child support and the spouse only make a partial payment the payment is first allocated to the child support and the remaining amount of any is considered alimony let's take a look at an example Mary and Ryan divorce agreement was executed in 2016 well it means it's relevant because the amount paid is deductible the amount received is taxable as per the agreement Mary is entitled to receive an annual payment of 45,000 out of which 25 is allocated to child support in 2020 Mary received a total amount of 40,000 determine the amount that Mary should include in her taxable income for 2020 well guess what the payment is 45 the taxpayer only made a $40,000 payment how do you allocate the payment first we have to satisfy the child support so the child support is neither taxable to the recipient nor deductible by the payer assuming it's uh, assuming anything now the child support portion is neither the taxable to the recipient nor deductible to, by the payer it doesn't matter what time however the alimony payment is since it's executed in 2016 is deductible by the payer and taxable to the recipient in this question the spouse made a partial payment what should we do first of the 40,000 we would assume we are satisfying the child support first and what's left is 15,000 therefore 15,000 is alimony and 15,000 is deductible by the payer and taxable by the recipient this is how it's going to work what should you do now well go to farhat lectures and look at additional multiple choice true false exercises that's going to help you whether you are a cpa candidate enrolled agent or an accounting student good luck study hard invest in your career and of course stay safe